So the Goodwood Festival of Speed is over for another year now. It was great to get back after 2020 being cancelled. So mainly I filmed the Amira um, launch and you'll see that video. There's a link in the description and you can also find it on the channel. But I also took a lot of other footage which will hopefully give you a bit of the sights and sounds of, of Goodwood and help you sort of get the feel for what it was like if you didn't manage to make it or if you're in another part of the world and you've never been to uh, the Festival of Speed. But anyway, here's the footage that I took. I'll give you some commentary as we go through and tell you what I think about the different things that you see. But uh, anyway, take a look and see what you think. Great to finally see the Aston Martin V12 Speedster in person. At £765,000, it seems cheap compared with the other two, the Ferrari Monza and the McLaren Alva. And it really looks the part as well, sort of draws on the heritage while looking modern at the same time. Nice to see this as well, the uh, Maserati MC20. Hadn't really seen this, it sort of disappeared off the radar really after the launch by Mr JWW. But um, really nice looking thing in person. Uh, very similar to sharp blue this colour that Porsche use and this seems to be the, uh, the in colour at the moment. Lovely Porsche 992 GT3 was there of course in this lovely sharp blue that everybody seems to be copying at the moment. I think this was the first outing for the new GT3 Touring as well. So this one showed up on the stand. Um, one of the things I noticed, which is interesting, which has come up in several videos, is that the, the front splitter is in the body colour, which gives it quite a noticeable, uh, different look. Also in the Michelin supercar paddock was this lovely, heavily modified GT2 RS. Lovely carbon fibre weave in the bonnet as well. Electric Avenue was an interesting area this year. It got a really good, interesting mix of cars. Um, you've got the Citroen Ami, which is quite a revolutionary thing. It sort of comes in at the bottom end and it's for, for young people to kind of have as their first city car. It's got some interesting design elements as well, sort of um, the front and the back are exactly the same and the doors are exactly the same. So they can be used, uh, you know, sort of cheap um, mouldings and they can be used on both ends of the car, which makes it a lot cheaper to buy and run. Hasn't got a particularly great range or any particularly great speed, but it's just a different way looking at the problem that we've got these days with electric cars. This is kind of the other end of the scale, or almost the other end. This is £35,000 worth of, uh, of Fiat electric car, uh, which has got lots of really nice detailing. It's got some interesting logos on the seats as well that sort of throw back to the earlier Fiat logo. Um, but a lot of money for what it is, really, but um, it is beautifully turned out. It was interesting to see the Porsche Taycan back-to-back uh, -back with the new uh, e-tron um, GT from Audi because they are basically the same car um, but you know very different take they really kind of work well with their own individual brands and uh, interestingly the Audi smelt like an Audi uh, and the Porsche smelt like a Porsche which is always uh, interesting but again lovely quality product It'd be nice to get to have a go at driving one of these and, and comparing them back to back at some point <laughs> I 
I do like this colour as well, so maybe it is time to move on from my love of crayon. Nice to see the Lotus Avija here as well. They, uh, on their own stand, they had the nicely a sort of yellow painted one but this one looked like I painted it but it was the working prototype so still nice to see it running. This Ionic 5 from Hyundai was really interesting. It's, it seems like it's a bit of a game changer for Hyundai, really. It's, uh, it's a really interesting halo product for the brand. It's, uh, it's got lots of lovely kind of retro futuristic detailing and it looks really well put together as well. So I think this is gonna do really well for the brand. This was interesting to see. I didn't even really know it existed uh, physically because it was created for a Gran Turismo game, but uh, might be a sort of a nod towards what's going to happen with some elements of the Jaguar design language uh, over the next few years, which is nice to see. Always nice to get down to the Porsche stand. There's always something interesting to see down there. New GT3 in lovely yellow, yellowy orange colour. This is a lovely colour, isn't it? It's a GTS 4 litre. Sorry. No, you're right. I was Sorry. just going to shut up. You're filming it. <laughs> I think this might be my new favourite Porsche colour. Everybody likes crayon, but this sort of Nardo grey, possibly it might be called, uh, is my new favourite colour. I think this would look great on a GT3 or GT3 Touring. It's the uh, E um, Formula E car, isn't it? Yeah, quite well. And, and here, here comes another one of those sort of spare matter flushes. <laughs> 
Just as some bonus footage, here's some of the lotuses in the performance car parking area. Rather nice LF1 Exige. Here's a rather nice 1979 sort of resto modded Lotus Esprit S2. Here's a nice late V8 Peter Stevens uh, Esprit. Here's a nice 350 Sport Exige. It's pretty good to go around this performance car area. There's a really good mix of uh, different types of cars. It's really, really varied. And there's lots of nice Lotus stuff as well. Here's a lovely 1973 Europa Special. Really nice uh, Elise 220 Sport. <laughs> I think this is one of my favourite cars in the whole world. This is a 1955 550 Porsche Spider. Absolutely fantastic. lovely original Porsche 718 which obviously the current range of Boxsters and Caymans take their name from
lovely to see this legendary 935 Moby Dick, um, especially in these lovely martini racing colours. Nice to see the new McLaren Artura in real life rather than just in photographs. I'm not sure about this launch colour, it looks pretty horrible really. And I really don't like the uh, the vents uh, just at the leading edge or the, the back edge of the front wing. It sort of looks like it's echoing a GT2 Porsche but they'd probably look better in carbon fibre or something like that. I think they look like just a little bit of an afterthought sort of thrown on there because there's an unhappy large area between the window pillar and the wheel so I don't know what do you think about that let me know uh, in the comments but obviously the v6 hybrid system is going to be really interesting so I'm niggling about a very small detail one of my favorite areas of the show in previous years and this year is the Cartier uh, concourse area that has a really nice mix of interesting cars from a whole bunch of different time periods. I'm a big Back to the Future fan uh, and it's always nice to see a DeLorean DMC 12 but it was particularly nice to see one that didn't have a hoverboard in the passenger seat or a flux capacitor, just a nice DeLorean as it should be really. I've always liked DeLoreans even before Back to the Future so it was, it's always great to see a, a really nice unmolested one. As you can see, there's some real dream cars here. I mean, a 500 SL Gullwing, how often do you get to see one of those? And also, sort of alongside it, or towards the back of it, was a Periscopo um, Lamborghini Countach, which again, you just don't see because they're all mothballed these days. And this was interesting. This was a, one of the first, or I think this was number one E-Type. It's a, a 3.8 flat floor Series 1 Coupe. It's even got the external bonnet catches, which is uh, a bit of a big deal for an early E-Type. This is an Espano Suiza, which has been recently restored. Uh, it's even got, hasn't got chrome work, it's got nickel plating, uh, which looks fantastic. And this grey colour is bang on trend at the moment, so uh, beautiful car. It's always lovely to see uh, the Beast of Turin at good to want to see it and to hear it as well. And that's what's great about the show, it's not just about seeing the cars, it's about hearing them and seeing them in action. Uh, this was a lovely fitting tribute to Sir Sterling Moss, um, the 722 on display. So that's it from me from the Festival of Speed. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the footage that I took and the different cars uh, that you saw. Great event, really enjoyed myself, uh, saw 
everything that I wanted to see. I really enjoyed the, uh, the Cartier uh, concourse area. Such a variety of interesting things that I had and hadn't seen before. Love that Espano Suiza. That was a really interesting, beautiful car, lovely restoration. So I hope the video gave you enough of the sights and sounds. I didn't get everything because it's kind of impossible uh, to see absolutely everything. But uh, anyway, I hope you, you got the feel for it and you enjoyed what you saw anyway. So thanks very much for watching as usual. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that stuff if you like the channel. More car videos and car reviews to come uh, in the future. So hopefully I'll do the kind of stuff that you like and you'll feel as though you want to hang around and subscribe. But anyway, bye for now and thanks for watching. It had to be ingenious. It had to be memorable. But it also had to have a certain purity to it. I think every designer uses uh, ice planes and military aircraft. Yes, even this has done something truly special. It has to be more than just telling the heads. Right.